I can't believe my mom would do this again. She's walking into the house with another brand new designer handbag. My dad would go ballistic if he found out she's been spending money on purses again. My mom has a serious shopping addiction. She tries to hide it from us, but she talks to her fancy friends about it all the time. She thinks I can't hear her because I'm deaf. Well, surprise, I can. Since I was seven years old, my hearing started to deteriorate. It's because of a rare ear disease. By the age of 10, I was completely deaf. We tried operations and treatments, but nothing worked. I had to go to a school for students with hearing and sight disabilities. It was extremely traumatic. I had to learn sign language and reading lips. Luckily, I made a few good friends. I felt really miserable. One day during break time, I fell to the ground in tears. I couldn't believe that I would never be able to listen to music again or hear anyone's voice. My friend, Rosie, pulled me to the side. She was acting really strange. I have a secret, she mouthed. From her pocket, she took a hearing aid. It's really powerful, she mouthed. Give it a try. At first I was hesitant, but what did I have to lose? To my shock, it worked. I could hear birds and cars. I could hear Rosie laughing. It was a miracle. Rosie gave it to me and said, keep it until you feel a bit better. I decided not to tell my parents about it. I was sure they knew something like this existed and they never bothered to buy me one. Also, I wanted to know if they kept anything from me. That night, I could hear my parents fighting about money and purses. I'm making all the money and you're spending it on handbags, said my dad. Oh, honey, it doesn't cost that much. You know that. It's all for the show. Even though it was really great to hear again, I didn't like listening to my parents fighting. But nothing could prepare me for the secrets that I would find out next. That night, my parents got all dressed up. My mom was showing off her new glittering designer dress and matching shoes. Off they went to a fancy dinner at some rich guy's house. My dad was only a small shop manager and my mother stayed at home. Where did they get all that money from? Luckily, I was old enough and didn't need a babysitter. I watched some TV with the sound turned to full volume. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. I got a fright and switched off the TV. The knock became louder and louder. I looked through the peephole. It was a lady. She seemed distressed. It's Mia. Open up. Open up. They're looking for me. Everything in my body told me not to open the door, but I did it anyway. I had my sign nearby. I can't hear you. I'm deaf. I showed it to the lady as she forced her way in. She was going on a total rant about purses and something about the police and where my parents were. She looked as though she hadn't slept in days. I guided her to the couch. She seemed harmless, so I made her a cup of tea and gave her some leftover pizza. She said, thank you, but I shrugged my shoulders, pretending not to know what she was saying. In a matter of moments, the lady fell asleep. She was snoring so loudly. Finally, my parents came into the house. They were arguing again. My mom said, if you didn't give it all away, we'd be rich by now. To which my dad replied, if you would have just stuck to the plan, I wouldn't have given it all away. Then they saw me. Honey, you're still awake. I pointed to the sofa. My mom was completely shocked. Mia, Mia, what are you doing here? My dad used sign language to tell me that it was my mom's childhood friend. Then he told me to go to my room. So I did. I tried to listen to my parents and what they were saying when something really weird happened. My hearing aid started to buzz. It made these strange noises like a radio tuning into a station. Was I picking up signals? It doesn't seem like Mia will be coming out of that house tonight. I quickly jumped to look out of the window. A black SUV was standing outside. Two men were sitting in the front. It looked like one had a hand radio. I heard them talking. Let's go. We can catch up with her tomorrow. We don't want them seeing us. The SUV drove off. A few moments after the two guys left, I could see my parents and Mia walking to her car. They opened the trunk and removed five big black bags from it. My dad said, we'll keep them in the safe. Did we have a safe? I never knew that. I could hear them walking to my dad's study. We weren't allowed in there. I followed them and hid behind the door. My dad moved a heavy bookcase out of the way. Behind the bookcase was a huge door with a lock pad. What could be in there? Jewelry? A few sentimental pieces? He punched in a six-digit code and the giant door opened up. Inside was a small room. There was money stacked from the floor to the ceiling. I gave a big gasp. My mom must have heard me. She turned around, but I quickly hid behind the door. Throw the bags in there for now. Let's sleep on it, and we'll figure out what to do with it all tomorrow. My parents offered Mia to sleep on the couch. Later that night, I heard my dad tell my mom, We need to get rid of Mia. She knows too much. My mom agreed. What were they going to do to Mia? And what were they hiding? In the early morning hours, I heard a commotion coming from downstairs. It was still dark outside. I had to investigate. The sound was coming from my parents' safe. It was Mia. She was filling a backpack with cash. She probably cracked the code. I turned on the light. She looked at me in shock. 
then waved with a creepy smile on her face. I was curious to know what was going on. I asked, what are you doing, Mia? She looked even more shocked. Oh, you can talk. Um, yes, I just can't always hear so well. She looked at me with a soft smile and sighed. Well, come here and I'll tell you everything. Somehow, I felt sorry for this lady. She looked completely lost. As I walked towards her, she was putting the backpack on her shoulders. Completely oblivious to what she was planning, I moved closer. With a big push, she shoved me into the safe and closed the door. The safe was completely soundproof. I started knocking on it and kicking, but nothing. It was really tough. Luckily, there was a damp light inside. I was surrounded by cash and black bags. I screamed and yelled, but no one heard me. Then my hearing aid started to make scratchy noises again. Where's Mia? I heard my dad say. Somehow my hearing aid picked up the frequencies from inside the house. There she goes, run, get her. I could hear them running out of the front door, but it was too late, Mia got away. How are we going to explain this to the boss, Stefan? Said my mom, I have no idea. Mia was your employee. Huh? Did my mom have an employee? She is always either shopping and maxing out credit cards or watching her favorite soaps on TV. You're going to have to explain it to him. I'm not doing your dirty work. You got greedy and now you have to pay for it. My mom stomped off to the bedroom with my dad following her. I screamed again, hoping they'll hear me, but they didn't. I was stuck inside this safe. When were my parents gonna figure out that I was missing? My hearing device went completely silent for about an hour. I looked around me. There was probably more than $1 million in cash there. The black bags were tightly closed. I was so curious to know what was inside. Just as I was about to open one, the weird buzz sound appeared again. Someone said, Mia's car isn't here anymore. I say we pay those to a front door visit, what do you say? I bet it was the two guys in the black SUV again. Through my hearing device, I could hear the two guys barging into our front door. My mother screamed in horror. Where's our merchandise? We want it now, the guy said demandingly. Okay, okay, Stefan, we got it, come with us, my dad said calmly. This guy was Stefan, the boss? I could hear them moving towards the study. Thank God they were gonna find me in here and set me free. I could tell they were standing outside the safe's door. We want everything that Mia made, you hear? Don't think that you're gonna trick us. Show us the stuff. I could hear my dad guiding the two guys to the safe. At this point, I was really panicking. So I just decided to hide behind the bags. I quickly moved them around. My dad opened the safe and pushed the two guys into it with me. I shrieked when one of the guys stomped onto my foot. It all happened so quick. Before I knew it, my father shut the safe again. It was me and the two guys in there. They were screaming and kicking the door. The bags fell off my body. They didn't even notice me. Then I yelled, stop it. I don't know what came over me, but I was tired of being ignored and I wasn't scared anymore. The two guys got a big fright. I've never seen two grown men more scared in their lives. They must have thought that I was a ghost. I said, shut up. They fell completely silent and fell to their knees. I could hear my parents through my hearing aid again. Stefan won't be happy with the amount of merchandise we have for him. He wants more and we can't keep him locked for long, my mom said. Without Mia, we can't produce anything. She's the only one who could copy that exactly. What were they talking about? Then it hit me. The merchandise is probably inside these black bags. The two guys stared at me as I tore open the black bags that came from Mia's car. One of them even started praying. He really thought I was a ghost. I went, boo and he gave a shrill scream. As the secret was finally revealed, it was a bunch of handbags made with shiny stones and beautiful fabrics. Stefan and his friend's eyes were wide open. For the first time, I understand my mom's obsession with designer bags. They were truly magnificent. Stefan broke his silence and asked, creature of the night, where did you find these handbags? Everything finally made sense. Mia was the one who made knockoff designer handbags. My parents probably sold them to Stefan who then sold them on the black market. They were complete fraudsters. I could hear my mother say, we have to let them out now. I decided to take matters into my own hands and played along with their illusion. I put on a ghost voice and chanted, Mia, she's the one. Leave these people alone. Never come back. Promise me, promise. The two men were nodding their heads and shaking. At that moment, my mother opened the safe's door. The two men rushed out of the safe screaming. My parents didn't even notice me. They ran after Stefan. They were probably in such a state of shock that they left the safe's door open. I could finally escape. As my parents closed the front door, I pretended to have just woken up. Hello, honey. Did you sleep well? They hand signed. I nodded yes, pretending to rub the sleep from my eyes. I never told my parents that I heard all their secrets through my powerful hearing aid. And that Monday, I asked my parents if I could get this kind of hearing aid, but they said, it's too expensive. I couldn't believe that they lied to my face. I knew how much money they had hidden in that safe. At school, I returned Rosie's hearing aid. Perhaps it was better that I didn't know about my parents' secret fraudulent business. Or maybe I should take some money from the safe without them knowing. 
and buy the hearing aid myself. Either way, I've learned a lot from this experience.